What's up YouTube? It's Uncle No Identity and in today's video on the Dodge Dart Restoration Project I've got a few bits and pieces laid out that we're going to take a look at so last time I tried a chemical it was Mr. Clean All Purpose Cleaner and as you remember from the other car that I did that on Everything just fell off. The paint just fell completely off. It worked really good. And in this video, I went to Ollie's and picked up this. It's Mean Green Antibacterial. Decided to try some of that out. I was going to buy Simple Green or Purple Power, which is what all the YouTubers say to use. I first did a little test sample. And here, there are some bits and pieces still actually in this concoction right now. As we can see, uh, these are motor parts for an old Ford kit. Uh, I was given this Ford kit by a co-worker of mine, and this did sit in this bath for quite a few days, and that's probably enamel paint or very, very old acrylic. I will probably talk about that Ford later, but not right now. But uh, for now, this is what happens when I put my, when I put some plastic in there. This did not get stripped. <clears throat> so, mean green works and doesn't work. Uh, I've uncovered that this car is painted blue and green. Um, I think the last time it had a black stripe. But however, when I was stripping it down, it actually had a white stripe to begin with. So it was, I think I did green and white stripe, and then I painted it blue and black. Yeah, because I think on the original car, when I first built it, I built it just like the kit. Now it's upside down the boxes, obviously, because I got stuff in there, but you can see how this kit is green with a white tail stripe. That's what I did on the first model. This was I think a uh, Tester's Marine Corps Green was the color used and this was Tester's Blue just regular acrylic blue this is not it obviously but came in this kind of bottle. Uh, I've just sanded this down that's where one of the old indicators used to be that's gone, and right here used to be a GTS logo. There was a GTS logo back here. This still has a crack in it. And just recently, see that? That still has to go. This has to go. And so does this turn signal. I've discovered a crack right there, a little cut there. Uh, trying to open up the uh, hinge areas and the gaps, I continuously gouge at the plastic by mistake. Uh, old Panastar logo used to be there. That's what underneath the shell looks like. That's old glue residue. So, I'm not going to do any painting on this because obviously it's not stripped down all the way. Uh, this car did have a vinyl top. I don't know if I should just do the 426 race hemi and go no vinyl top, which would be historically accurate. I don't think any hemi darts LO23 had vinyl tops. They were just strictly off the factory. Everything from these doors and back was primer gray, 
and everything from the cowl forward, I think, was a gel coat black. I bought a new paint color, by the way. Well, so we're talking about what we're going to do with the car. Vallejo's Gunmetal Blue. And I've already had this for a while, as you've seen with my other kits, the Arctic Blue. So this is what Arctic Blue looks like, and as you can see, it's a dark blue color. And here is the Gunmetal Blue. It's a really nice color. It's a little lighter in shade. This looks, I think, like B5 Blue. Is it B's? Yeah. What's that famous blue everybody likes? Is it B5 or B7? No, I think B7 blue is the light blue, and B5 is the darker blue. Yeah, because I think I've always said I like B5. Yeah, and B7 is the overly popular, is that highly popular Chrysler blue. Now, I was watching some videos on the, the Hemi Darts and the Muscle Car of the Week's got one of these. The Mickey Weiss, I think is the car's name, with the red and white paint scheme. The entire engine bay is black. The rest of the car is got the paint scheme red and white on there. But inside the engine bay, it's black. There's the firewall. I have to re cement that. And actually, dang it. These pieces came loose from each other. I just had this cemented, but that just broke. I got a pretty solid joint there now. I used Mr. Cement S. And this works really good if you know how to use it right. Tester's liquid cement. And I say if you know how to use it right because for anyone who doesn't know how to use this, yes, it has a fine tip applicator. But the amount of liquid, it's very liquidy. And the amount of liquid that comes out, if I was to take this right now and just run a dab through here, first off, I would have to come in from the bottom and run my dab of glue. Let me try to focus it there. Let me get the lighting right. Let me zoom in a bit. So if I was going to use this, I would do it like this. But remember, this, this thing puts out too much glue at one time. You do it like that, and you can screw up a model with ease. There's just too much liquid coming at you at one time. So what I like to do is I used to take these uh, stands. And I don't have any on me right now. But uh, actually, just to fix that weld, here's what I did. Because I knew this Ford motor that I'm working on ain't going to go together right. And I got another Ford motor, motor I can use for that Ford. Here's the intake manifold of that Ford motor. I literally just flipped it over. And you can see right here this clean spot. Right in here, this clean spot. I literally just took some of this and just... I literally just poured it in here. And we'll just use a toothpick and just run the toothpick along the seam just like that. So you take this or another piece of scrap plastic, whatever you want to use, put your glue in there because it's very liquidy. And then with a toothpick, you take your toothpick, which now has cement in there. And not only that, it really helps you to really drag it along and you can... you can dab for some more and re-weld and dab for some more 
and just keep going on down the seam and just go one two maybe three coats if you need to and when you do this kind of stuff you put it on the inside and that way you can try to keep the tops as clean as possible and I still will probably need to sand this down but that's okay mm. that's about it and it looks like here I've tried to paint this with a metallic green Or was that when I mixed a turquoise color together? Look at this, folks. Look at that. It's almost like it's copper rusting. That greenish color copper makes when uh, copper rusts. Here's some army green, or marine green. Are you kidding me? Well, that just happened. Okay, well, I've already just re-welded re that. I'm going to have to do it again. Ooh, this time I'll actually put the firewall in there. And then re-weld the whole thing together. Uh, let's see what else I can talk about. Where are the other pieces? Here we go. That's the radiator and the firewall cleaned up to as best as I can get it. I probably need to try out a different chemical. I mean, it works, but like I said, that Mr. Clean chemical would have just stripped this thing down to bare plastic, no problem. This is the back piece. There seemed to be a little problem with the uh, with the back bumper. It looked like something got melted in there or got stuck up in there when they weld uh, when they casted the chrome plating on there. You could really see this very annoying sort of it almost looked like a hair or just a line went through it, and I didn't like that, so I had to strip that down. And right here, you can see this flat part, shine, flat part, that's where the stuff used to be, I just sanded that down. Do the same thing for the front bumper. This has, like, some super glue on there, because I tried, I put the, uh, license plate on there, and that's what that happened to it. They said you're not supposed to slide the transfer off, you're supposed to cut the decal out, and put the decal on there with some glue so I did that and now it made this mess so that's where we're at right now on the uh, on the super stock dodge restoration project uh, for anyone who's ever asked just how long does it take for me to put these models together well, it's not something you do overnight, that's for sure. And in the case of this car, it's definitely taken me quite some time. I think, just knowing what day it is right now when I'm making this video, it's January the 23rd. Uh, I think w this project might last into next month, and even then, next month, it still won't be done. But, uh... I just work on it little bit by little bit. Oh, check this out. This is the back plate that had the nail polish on there. And it removed some of it and it also had... There's metallic green testers enamel I tested in the back. That's gone. This had... Uh, like... Uh... Don't have a bottle for it. Oh. That's the paint bottle. Had a Citadel Colors Demon Red was the color. Was first painted on there. Wanted to see what that looked like. It was a really nice, bold, dark red color. Flat 
color, wasn't shiny. And of course I put this sparkly pink nail polish on there just to see what that would do. Nail polish is too thick for these. And I have yet to find a thinner that works on paint uh, nail polish. I think I used... Uh, here it is. I tried thinning out a nail polish with this. And that just said nail polish be gone. It just disintegrated the nail polish basically. It went from something you could use to put on your fingers to something you should just throw in the trash because it I just destroyed the paint. It literally had one of the worst looking reactions I've ever seen. And I said, oh no. I was gonna use that color. It was a really nice color too. It was like a sparkly, kind of glittery, dark gray color. I was going to use it on a Plymouth GTX build, but that obviously didn't happen. So that, yeah, that's what's going on right now on the channel update. The Dodge Dart is still, as you can see, it's all broken now. The paint's not off all the way like I want it. I still have to sand down the indicator and the GTS logo and the Panastar logo. I have to sand some more stuff down and I gotta see if I can take this paint and decal off with a different chemical or something. So that's where I'm at right now with it. It's kind of, I wouldn't say it's holding itself together, but it's, it's hanging in there. Shoot, if you think about it, it probably would have been cheaper and a lot better just to go buy another kit of the same thing. But then I'd get mad at myself because now I've got three Dodge Darts and four A-bodies. I'd have this, the other Dodge Dart. A new kit if I bought a new kit in the 71 Plymouth Duster so that would be four A bodies in the collection which I wouldn't mind having four A bodies I just don't need two or th I just don't need three 68 Dodge darts they have a 70 Plymouth Duster dragster kit that I was looking at getting and I would just paint it pink because it's 1970 <clears throat> so yeah that's that's going on I've got a this drive shaft from the other Dodge Dart it's actually got a pin in there that I can use so I'll probably use this drive shaft I got all the glass I need now I don't know if I told you all about this but uh, the other Dodge Dart's A pillar driver's side a pillar is missing so I just pulled this glass we're gonna use that on this car because this one actually has both a pillars so yeah that's what we're doing to the car I uh, haven't even thought about decals and what graphics to use because I'm still trying to figure out how to just get the paint off and paint it blue so that's that uh, kind of a bad video I guess I don't know I just kind of rambled on too much and talked about something and didn't talk about it and then talked about it and didn't talk about it so uh, before I close out this video should I paint the firewall and inner engine bay blue or do I paint it black let me know down in the comments down below what you would want to see and I will catch you guys in the next video where hopefully I don't know we might talk about the Plymouth for all we know
Or I'll just talk about something else entirely. Who knows? That was my video on the 68 Dive Start update and an experiment with Mean Green Cleaner. Which I'll say, I guess if your kit is very, uh, if the kit is not very old, you could probably use Mean Green. But for a kit this old, I would probably have to go buy myself another chemical and continue work on it. Uh, purple Power, Simple Green, that uh, Mr. Clean that I bought the last time, it worked really well. So, yeah, Mean Green does okay, it's just not, just not the best. Well, I'm Uncle Noah Dendy, and I hope you enjoyed this video, where I just pretty much rambled on about things that I'm doing. Hope you all found something interesting, or got something out of there. Uh, so yeah, that's the video on the Superstock Dodge Dart. That'll probably take a million years to fix, because I can't even get the dang paint off. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.